Okay, we're gonna get started here. Can you hear me, Lily? So you had flood, flash, flood, thunder, and lightning all night. No one here got much sleep. Kids and dogs all in your bed. Uh-oh. Where are you at again, Lily? Where do you live again? Okay. Because we were getting storms here too yesterday pretty bad. Crazy. I'm glad everybody's safe, even though you probably don't have much sleep. <laughs> Uh, well, at least you have internet access now. You have, uh, you're on here and ready to go, right? Super tired, yeah. Well, hopefully you can get some rest here. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Lily. Power outages everywhere. We had storms yesterday as well, but they were more north of where, <clears throat> from where I live, but my, my parents live up north, and they had really crazy storms too, so hello. Just talking about the storms Lily was experiencing. She didn't get any sleep last night. <laughs> well, thank you guys for um, joining me so early. I know this is a little rough for some of you who are in other zones here. I mean, it's 10 o'clock here on my side, Eastern Standard Time. It's pretty early. I got my coffee next to me. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Did you guys get started on your projects yet? Yes, very cool. Almost done, good, awesome. Yeah, I got your email. Um, I got actually two students and one of one of the two were, was you, Lily, about the daily checkpoint. I have to redo, okay. Yeah, the daily checkpoint, let me open up. And that was today's daily checkpoint. For all of you who are doing the daily checkpoint today, um, for today, which is Wednesday, um, this is kind of what you'll see here. There's a link to a YouTube video that isn't working. It's disconnected. So this was brought to my attention. Yeah, it was an easy question though, for sure. So, so if you want to use a panel that is not in the sidebar, go to the blank menu. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty easy to figure it out. But if you are to get it wrong, if you don't, if you don't attempt it, obviously you're not going to get points. But if you do get it wrong, I will give you credit just because the link is not working. So, thank you for letting me know. By the way, sometimes that happens. Videos get pulled, um, and it just happens. <laughs> so I'll just have to alert somebody for sure in the class to uh, to change that question out. Well, great to have you guys in here. This is uh, week one, live lecture two. We um, went over the first part of this uh, week yesterday in the lecture. So if you missed that lecture, um, definitely check out the recording. We went over just class details, um, a little overview about um, vector and first raster-based images, a little introduction, um, refresher type of an overview that we did yesterday. And then we also did a demo of your assignment one. So if you missed that, you can definitely go back and check that out. Um, I just wanted to go over a couple of things today. Uh, I just, uh, there's a really cool new feature that came out when CS6 hit and I was teaching this class. I just want to show you really quickly. And this is, you know, pretty, pretty dated in regards to uh, where we are now, but maybe you are un un unaware, so I want to bring this up anyway. Um, and that is the, and you used to never be able to do this. So let me share my artboard here. The ability to put a gradient on a stroke. You never used to be able to do that. So it's kind of interesting, you know, the old school method that we used to have to do. It's a little different now. So all you need to do, let's do like a little spiral here. Um, oops, cancel that. <clears throat> All right, so the stroke is what we're talking about, not the fill. So the stroke is an outline. You should never be able to put a gradient on a stroke here, so a, a single line. You were able to do it if you had a solid shape with a fill color. You were able to easily do it by pulling up your gradient um, panel and filling it with the gradient, you know, whatever gradient uh, color it was, you could easily fill it with that. But the stroke, because it's a single line, 
there was no option to do that before this came out. So I just wanna show you really quickly here. Let me give it a little bit of a thicker stroke. And right now my fill for my stroke is a solid black, but if I wanted to put a gradient on this, it's very easy now. All I have to do is click on the gradient. Now I can change the colors and everything, but all I did was click on the gradient panel and there you go. Now back whenever, before this option was available, you had to create the shape uh, with not one single line, not a stroke, you had actually recreate it so it was a closed shape. So, you know, as you can imagine, you know, it's definitely easier. Another thing is with type, let me put my name here. So if you had your type, bring up my character panel here, because type is also affected by this. Let me make it really big here. If you were to just um, select the type as the typeface itself and try to fill it, obviously it's not going to work because it's a typeface. But if you were to create an outline, so if you were to go up to type and create outlines, and now it is a shape, you can apply it to that. So just a couple of things that, you know, to think about, you know, that's, that's now available. And this is, this is a more of a fill because it's, it's shapes that are closed, but I just wanted to show you that because that's kind of a, kind of another option if you wanted to play around with that. Very, very cool. So you can um, add it to a, an actual, oops, let me get my slides back up here. Sorry guys. Another feature which is not out yet and it is coming out and I'm going to show you this link here um, to CC, so more upgraded change here to a gradient. There's going to be a gradient option. Hello, who's that, Lily? <laughs> Good to see your face there. Let me bring up this uh, visual arts online. Okay, here we go. It's a new tool in the gradient section. So I'm gonna show you this video because it explains it very nicely. So you can see what's coming as this option. Let me show you this video real quick. But um, this link here will also go in a little bit more in detail. I'm gonna play this video for you guys. It's not yet available, um, but it will be towards the I don't know, it should be soon because they said the end of the year. So make this a little bit bigger here. Hi, I'm Paul Trani, Senior Creative Cloud Evangelist, and this is a sneak preview of a new gradient feature coming to Illustrator CC later this year. As artists and designers, we often use gradients to add depth and sort of rich color to our work. But if you're looking to create a blend well, of colors that flow into each other more naturally, all you need to know is linear and radial gradients, gradients can really 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 and gradient meshes can really succeed. That's why we've been working. Hello, everyone. So excited Hello to be everyone. here. I am so, so excited to be here. Hold on one second, guys. Which totally will blow your mind. Thank you. So, so if you are a portrait artist, and so if you are a portrait artist, and this is one of your portraits. Let's try this again. I got like five million things playing in the background here. All right, here we go. Sorry, guys. That's why we've been working on a new feature that creates rich blends of colors that simply diffuse naturally into each other. All you have to do is start with the initial color and then add a second color or as many as you want. And notice how the colors go beyond a simple blend. They diffuse naturally together and organically. You can add as many of these points as you want to create limitless options. You can also control the intensity of the diffusion as well as the transparency.
This diffusion effect is also aware of the shape's boundaries and will gradually blend with the contours of the object as well. You can also draw with lines and curves, creating boundaries that instruct how the gradients behave in certain areas, really giving you a lot of control over anything you want to create. Creating dynamic color composites is now intuitive and flexible, going beyond what could have ever been created before. We're excited about this feature, and we can't wait to give you the chance to try it. Okay, let me type in something here. Yes, Gracie, I just uh, talked about that earlier today. <laughs> earlier this morning about the daily checkpoint, yeah. Yeah, so that's um, that's a really cool feature. That's it's not quite well. I went to check. It's not quite available yet on my CC. Um, but let me open up my let me open up my artboard here. Yeah, Gracie, the um, daily checkpoint. The yeah, the video link isn't working, and uh, the questions pretty easy as long as you attempt it. If you don't get it right, I will give you credit. So thank you for letting me know. Let's see if I'm sharing my artboard here. There we go. All right, so the gradient feature that they're talking about isn't, that you just saw the video on, is not available as of yet. But it's really interesting because, um, okay, so it is, if you go to your gradient panel box, it will be available under this type um, preset. So you have linear and radial, but eventually you're gonna have diffuse option once this is available. And the diffuse option is kind of like you just saw in the video. It's really cool because not only does it take into account, you know, um, different uh, presets that you can do very easily within the actual um, tool, but also it contours the actual um, color around the shape. So it, it's combining almost like the mesh tool, which we'll be talking about today, the features of the mesh tool. So pretty interesting. So that'll be definitely coming out. I'm not sure when. When was this video? Let me check out the video here uh, when it was posted. Okay, so it was posted in uh, May 24th, 2018. So I'm sure it probably is going to be coming out pretty soon. But pretty interesting for sure. All right. So um, before I go forward, does anybody have any questions of anything that I went over yesterday in lecture or maybe um, besides the daily checkpoint issue, any problems that you have come across? Welcome, Gracie, by the way. <laughs> Everybody's good? I take that as everybody is good to go. No questions yet. All right. Don't forget, you guys, your discussion post, your initial post is due by um, before midnight for possible credit. And guys, I see a lot of you guys starting this early, which is great. So get those started. <clears throat> oh, okay. You have two design classes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm busy, busy. All right, um, so yesterday, just a little recap, we did an intro to Advanced Illustrator, just did an overview, went over your discussion one, and like I said, we did a little demo of your assignment one, so if you missed that, definitely check that out. Today, we are covering any questions um, and critique on assignment one. If you want to show any of your work at the end of the lecture today, you can share your screen. We can talk about it. We can just, you know, whatever, give you feedback. Um, if you're having issues with anything, we can definitely talk about that. So let me know, get your stuff ready to go towards the end of the lecture. We'll definitely have some time. Um, we just talked about some new tools in Illustrator and now we're gonna go over your assessment one. Sharing is caring, there you go, I like that. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at your assessment one here. And don't forget, um, you know, like I said before in yesterday's lecture, take a look at the grading rubrics in each of your projects, just so that you know you have everything pretty much covered um, and uh, you know submitted correctly. So this is kind of how I will be evaluating your work. All right, so let's take a look at your assessment one. And again, I think you guys are gonna really enjoy 
the projects this week in this class. I think this is kind of a really fun class to have. And uh, you guys will definitely learn, learn a lot. All right, so we are covering adding dimension to flat artwork. So as you can see, it goes into just different styles that you can do with um, shadowing. So a uh, flat shadow, I'm gonna read through this because I think it's important to understand each style here. So flat shadows are a flat illustration artwork style that is particularly popular in logo, icon, and infographic design as it is simple to convert and has a crisp contemporary look. A popular way to add a little dimension and still keep the artwork and shapes simple and flat is to create flat highlighted shapes and what often is called a long flat shadow. This is shown on the clouds, the sun, under the eaves on the house in the example above, as well as on a shadow on the man's forehead, under his hair, and under the tips of the collar on his shirt in the example below. Long shadows um, were very popular, I know, a few years ago. Um, some of these have been implemented into even certain apps on the phone, but uh, this is definitely a different style for sure. You can see that. Then you have custom gradients. They add more molded, lifelike, and three-dimensional look to vector artwork and shapes. There are several tools in Illustrator to customize the colors, directions, and placement of gradients through the custom gradient and gradient mesh tools. In these two examples, custom gradient meshes were applied to take what could have been flat, plain flat artwork to artwork with dimension. The mesh tool is what allows the designer to create gradients beyond simple linear or radiant gradients and being able to customize the gradient itself allows for an even even more complex color pattern like the rainbow effect in the sky on you know above here. Although these examples are not realistic or photographic in nature, they still have a more real world like dimension that isn't found in totally flat type artwork. Notice the hairband on the lady's head looks thick and soft. So here is an example of the two techniques combined. And they can also be carefully combined to create a crisp, clean, but yet soft and dimensional look. Notice the long shadow technique was used on the clouds and mountains, but the subtle curvature of the hills was done using a gradient mesh to create a smooth transition, giving additional depth to the illustration. <clears throat> okay, so for this prompt, this, for this assessment, you will use some specific illustrator tools and techniques to add dimension to a flat vector illustration. Building on the experience from your previous courses and the information in this week's, <coughs> excuse me, media, add dimension to the provided illustration by creating flat shadows, <coughs> excuse me guys, and gradient meshes. You can make two different copies and use the different techniques on each. I'm gonna grab some water here, guys. Hold on one second. Got the morning cops here. Okay, flat shadows on one, gradient meshes on the other. So you have options. You can uh, choose one of the following starting options for this assignment. You can use our assessment. You can use the line art portrait you did for week one's assignment, or you can download this shape illustration. And so you would just download this. It's an AI file and you would open this up in Illustrator. Um, note, you will need to have show outlines active in order to see the shapes for this artwork and then fill the shapes with a color. Okay, number three, make the following adjustments and additions to the illustration you decide to work with. So you have illustration A, create highlight shapes of the original shapes and add the colors to give dimension. You can add a long shadow and crop it off as you wish. Um, illust illustration B, duplicate the artboard and use custom gradient meshes to add a three-dimensional look and soft highlights and shadows as appropriate. If you add extra shapes for the flat shadows, you can remove or edit those for best results. <clears throat> you can have different approaches, colors, and light sources for each design, but you need to make any changes to the existing vector shapes unless, but you need 
not make any changes to the existing vector shapes unless you'd like to. All right, so basically you're gonna be going with either the landscape illustration or your um, portrait. Does that make sense? You guys have any questions about that? <clears throat> so, um, and then what you're gonna do with those two with that, what, whichever one you decide to do, you're going to do the, the following adjustments here. Okay. There's examples down here that you can check out that are benchmark examples of what uh, A level work would be. Let's open that up here. Now, obviously, there's you know some comments being made in here that can be imp improved upon. So you can definitely read those as well. But these are the examples that are given to you guys. <clears throat> so this is one that's showing more of the long shadow flat style here. Oops. And the comment here is to consider the light direction to have all the shadows be consistent. Because you can see that some of the shadows, some of them are shine, some of them are shadows. Um, but you can see in the clouds here, the shadows kind of shift. So make sure it's consistent. I guess that's what the, that comment is talking about there. The other example, let's open that up here, is on the portrait. And this is the before, and then this is the after. And the comment here is you can use a darker color on the side if you decide to have the light come from the right to have more realistic lighting. So just kind of more contrast added here but you can see the before and after if applied to the actual portrait. Um, you can see the shadows being placed here as well. So this is, you know, A and B. I don't know if this one, there we go. I have two different ones here. So you have the long shadows or highlights and then you have the uh, gradient. Okay, so I think that's great, you know, to have those examples in there. I think it's um, helpful for sure. All right, don't forget to just read through your rubrics. Make sure you're hitting upon all the criteria asked upon you guys to uh, fulfill for this assessment. And this is, how many points is this? This is a 50 pointer, yeah, usually they are 50 points. Um, but it, it breaks it down in between, you know, between the illustration B, illustration A as well, design quality, you know, your gradient mesh dimension and all of that. So concept and creativity. So whichever one you want to go with, that's going to be, um, you know, kind of your decision in regards to what option that you're going to use. If you use this um, particular file here, which is the landscape option. Let's take a look at that here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. It's going to look like this when you open it. It's going to look kind of crazy. Let me reset my panels here real quick. So this is the outlines that you're seeing here. Um, if when you're applying the color, you, you're going to need to ungroup it first too. And I'm going to go in, yeah, go into detail here. Just ungroup, ungroup, ungroup. All right. So when you apply color here, let's let's show you real quick. If I'm applying color to this bottom part. Go right here, ungroup. I have to do a lot of ungrouping here. Let's just add like a green color here. You're not going to be able to see it unless you go up to view and preview and choose the, the preview option above here. 
<clears throat> All right, so you can kind of add texture, or I'm sorry, you can add your color there. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually add some lines here so I can see. There's an outline option here too, but I'm gonna add a stroke here just for ease of, of flipping back and forth. I don't have to worry about it. Um, so, you know, kind of add your color and um, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be going into this in, in detail here in a second. Let me pull this over. All right. So if you're using this particular example and you're using this um, style of the long shadows, what I would do is first apply your bigger blocks of color like how I did here. <coughs> you don't have to go with the same colors as used in the example, but obviously if you're thinking about dimension, um, I would go with the darkest kind of the most closest element to you. the viewpoint is darker and then it goes lighter as it goes back. So you would just fill the color with the appropriate depth of view here. Oops, not that. <laughs> Did anybody get started on this yet? Just curious. Man, I'm like dying today. Whew, keep coughing. No, okay. All right. So just use, you know, the example as your guide too that was given to you guys in the, the resources, in your media sources there. Um, that way you kind of know how to apply the color, you know, the darkest, first to the lightest. And this is a little hill back here. And like I said, it doesn't matter what the actual color is in regards to matching it really close to the example. It could be kind of whatever you make it. I had this more of a yellow. <clears throat> All right. This is kind of like the tree line here. Let's add this, but then we're gonna maybe a little darker. And then we'll go a little lighter at this one. And then what, <clears throat> once you're done with the um, actual fill, you can just get rid of the, the stroke here. And we can do a select all and do that very easily. So you don't have this black stroke going on here. <coughs> all right. Let's see, I've got all these little trees here. You can grab the eyedropper tool and grab similar fills if you kind of want to keep it the same. The only problem is, you know, some of these are groups. So you're going to have the trunks are a little different color. So you're going to shift select the trunks. And give them a nice little, you can even give it a black, a black color, excuse me, I can talk. All right, the sky, obviously these are the clouds, they'll want to be the appropriate color as well. Go a little later. And then we'll go even lighter here. Oops. And do. So we're kind of receding back out. And then obviously this color would be even lighter. So I'm just selecting that color and then changing it in my color picker to a lighter color. I'm going to change this to be a little darker. So definitely adjust things as you go forward. It's just, you know, kind of making it look dimensional there. Okay, and then the clouds can be white, obviously. I'll make those white. And then now we have to just kind of implement those shadows in there. Let's see if I can get this a little brighter. 
blue. Okay, then save it. Obviously, you need to uh, save it appropriately to the. It almost looks like this is has a gradient already. It's kind of crazy. <clears throat> yes, it's a trick trick of the eye. All right, so name it DES three eighty week one assessment one, and then your first and last name. Actually, you don't have to do week one, just assessment one. <laughs> you can um, obviously copy this at this point before you even add the long shadows. So let's bring up your artboard here. Um, and let's copy this artboard. Let's drag this down and make a copy. And that way, when we're ready to do the gradients, we can apply the gradients to the second artboard. All right, any questions so far? Don't tell me you do. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. <clears throat> I feel like I'm going to choke. <laughs> Cough and choke. Okay, so you can use the example as a guide or kind of implement your own shadows in here. It's completely up to you. You know, you can do some really interesting things. You can uh, draw your long shadows from, let's say, the clouds, as you saw in some of the examples that were in the, the actual um, assignment one directions. So let's, let's do that here. You can actually do a line as long as, oh, you know what, let's start over here. Let's do a point from this right side of the cloud. Oh, let's make sure it's down at the bottom here to the left side. And it's up to you on where, how the direction that you want to go uh, in regards to the shadows. Just make sure it's consistent with, um, you know, if you're adding it to the other clouds. This is a weird fill here. Hold on one second, let me straighten this out. <clears throat> you can add um, a similar color of the cloud color or even darker if you want to give it like a muddier color. So, you know, obviously it looks like a shadow. And bring to front. If this is, this can be a layer that you can um, put in the back as well. On your, in your layers right now, they're basically all within this one layer here. Um, so you can definitely, you know, kind of play around with that because you have all of these other issues of, you know, stepping back. You can actually go back and say, just uh, step backwards and just keep things step the back or you know you can play around with the layers and put these all in different layers either way it's kind of like you got to do it as a group and we want the shadow to kind of come across you know you don't want it to look like it's just beaming down here. Another thing is let's let's give it a, an opacity before we even do that. So let's go up to oh can't see the top of my presets here. Sorry guys. <clears throat> I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this on a new layer here. So I'm gonna select that highlight and I'm gonna drag this up so it's on another layer. That way I have a little bit more control over that actual shadow here. And oops, let's bring up all right.
going to do a new shape layer for this as well. So we're going to grab this cloud and just bring this above that. Okay. Jeez, I'm getting all kinds of stuff going on here. All right. So as we go forward here, let's make this. <clears throat> Sorry guys, property. Go to your properties panel and you can adjust the opacity here. So we can kind of make it less solid. You can kind of see through there now. And then you can kind of fix the flow of the direction of your, um, of your, um, actually we could do a clipping mask too, of your shadow. <clears throat> I'm just actually going to put these on different layers. I think it's a little easier. Let me rearrange this here a little bit. Let's, and we can name this too, like Big Hillside. That way we kind of know that's gonna be above. Let's do another layer. We'll name this Small Hill. And I'm just moving these layers above so that they're not being affected by that shadow either. We've got some things kind of going behind here. That's something you could probably set up before you even start the shadow process, just so it's easier. Trees. There's my other tree over here. See, I'm kind of losing the tree over here. There we go. Okay, I think this is the only one I have selected, right? Yeah, okay. Let's put this on my tree layer, and then I can bring that above my shadow layer. All right, so. Let's go ahead and adjust this. I'm gonna make it a little less dark here. You may want it to go over certain elements like that tree. So I guess the good thing about this is you can adjust that right there. Um, you can adjust the actual shadow so it's maybe not, let's see if that goes a little bit more at an angle here. Or the perspective, I guess, is what I'm talking about here. So if you're using a perspective, we're gonna to want to match that perspective up as we go in each of the examples here. And what I would do is, I would actually just copy and paste this and kind of add it to the next um, cloud and then just adjust it accordingly. Do we have the clouds in the layer? No, okay, let's do that. this out so I can see it here. Here we go. And then you can adjust the shadow here, vector points. Still looks a little, little off here. Have to fix it. It's just a little bit too pronounced. I think it's, that's kind of what's bothering me here. So let me get the properties panel back up. Kind of adjusting things as we go forward here. Let's see, maybe like a 10% might be better. All right. It might look better if it's just a straight shadow here. Let me delete this one. It's just all about working with what you have. 
see if it works here. And then keeping it consistent. So you kind of have to work a little bit more with the layers for this option, but we can crop this out too. And I'm just selecting both of these sides so they can go together there. All right. So that is how you would do um, the long layers with the shadows there. You can add even more shine, say, to the, the clouds in the background, kind of like the example that you saw in the student example. You can even have the shadows from the, the um, grass as well. And you could do that free form, you know, if you just want to kind of draw out um, with your curvature tool, you know, kind of. Or you can actually make a copy too of the actual hillside. So if I wanted to maybe match this curve, I could do a copy paste. And oops, let me give this a stroke here. <clears throat> just make it a little smaller and then kind of manipulate, manipulate that line so that it's only a part of this. So, you know, maybe I'm taking the, and I'm just throwing this out there. I'm just gonna see how this works here. Scissors tool, and I'm gonna cut probably right about here and right about here so that, oops, I just, yeah, get rid of this line. And fill it with this line here. Now I can keep it a stroke and variate that stroke. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's bring up a stroke panel. And let's make it a thicker stroke so you can see it. So you can make it a real thick stroke and then we can make it a variated stroke. Um, we can play around with that depending on what, what you want to do or there's kind of some options here. We can do the width tool. Remember the width tool here? We can kind of play around with that as an option. You know, you might need to kind of manipulate this line a little bit to get it where you need it to be, a little longer. But that width tool is definitely an option that you can play around with. Pull these in, Oops. pull these in a little bit. And then again, if you want to give it like a transparency so it's not so bright, you can do that. Now see my, uh, my layers are a little weird here. So it gets tricky. All right. I'm gonna pull my box down here so I can see all my shapes. All right, what am I missing? Did I delete one in here? I must have deleted a whole side back here by accident when I was doing the uh, copy and paste. Hmm. Let me see if it's in here. I think it's this one. All right, so let's do a new layer for the background clouds. I have a little bit more control over this. <clears throat> oh, 
Oops. And then this guy. All right, so I'm just adjusting the layers back here so that I can, there we go. Now I'm still missing the shape. It's hidden behind everything. There we go. I had to find my shape. And then you can go in and actually do more details uh, on this side too. So you can even just do a line like I did before with the pen tool and add a stroke to that. You can actually create a shape. You don't even have to do a line if you wanna do a shape too but I kind of find it just a little bit easier, especially because you have the other tools to customize this. Um, and then you can also bring it back behind here. And then, you know, obviously you can go in and Play with the width of it a little bit more with the width tool if you want to. Whatever looks good. You could do the shadows of the trees as well, just like you did up here. Implementing that into your, I would just basically copy this and make it smaller. Oops, sorry. Try fifty percent. All right, and I'll do a new layer here, and we'll name this Tree Shadows. And we'll just give it. Obviously, you can can't see it real well, so we're going to give it. A little bit darker of a color so up the transparency and then obviously the fill color will be a little different we want this to be maybe more so of the color of the tree or even the grass here whoops what am i doing here there we go so you can take the eyedropper tool kind of sample that out you might even want to go darker than that Completely up to you. Um, just make sure, let's see, let's pull this behind the trees here. And let's bring these forward. It's all about kind of working with the layers. I just did something weird. Okay, let's go up tree shadows and trees. There we go. Let's see a little darker here. And then just do a shift select and pull this shadow down. Move it over just a little bit. A little dark, adjust it just a little bit so it doesn't stick out too much. All right, copy paste. You can do the same thing to this one, just make it a little smaller. I'm just gonna scale it down a little bit.
just as long as it's kind of going in the right the same direction as the clouds you know obviously you have your shadows i could probably make us a little smaller make it look a little bit more realistic here so oops it's all about adjusting the vector points in a little bit Now this looks kind of odd, so maybe I would get rid of that and kind of play with this in a different way where the lighting is a little different. I was kind of doing two different lightings there. There we go. All right. This is probably a, a good one to add both gradient and long shadow so you have more of a texture type look because if you don't do the shine, the actual uh, gradient might look really nice on, say, this, you know, this particular option here, just because it looks a little, you know, it's a little bit more flat. Any questions about that? Nope. Okay. The next thing would be your, your gradient mesh tool. And we're going to, I'm going to take a quick five minute break before we get started with that. Um, I'll do a little demo of how to use the gradient mesh tool first, and then uh, we can apply it to the option here. Does that sound good? Take a quick five minute break and we'll get back to it. All right. See you guys in five.
Okay, can you guys hear me? Like our five minutes is up here. All right, um, before we get into the um, me showing you the actual demo for your project, your assignment, I want to show you real quick how to use the gradient mesh tool. You guys know how to use the gradient mesh tool? Have you played around with it before? Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Yes, all right, so maybe um, a lot of you guys are already familiar with it, which is great. For those of you who aren't, I'll just do a quick little demo here. I'm gonna use this nice little banana. All right, so a gradient mesh tool is, is pretty interesting because it allows you to get dimension to a, an object using uh, shadows and highlights. So I'm gonna show you how to do that um, using this picture here, and then we'll apply it to your, um, to your assessment. I'll show you kind of how to do that with your assessment. So let's bring up your layers panel, and let's lock this layer just so we're not messing around with it. We don't have to make it a template layer. We're just gonna lock it after we make another layer above here. Let's lock this one so we're not touching that. And then we'll just name this banana. Template. All right, so with the, the new layer selected, go ahead and take your pen tool and trace out your object. Now, you guys don't have to worry about that because you, you already have your object uh, traced out. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly with just this banana, yours is already traced out, either your portrait or the landscape option here. Let me just do this really quickly. Might not be completely perfect, but you get, you get the idea here. Make adjustments too. All right. this almost as close as I can get it. This is super perfect. All right, so I have the outline of the banana and what I'm gonna just do is take my eyedropper tool and just sample just kind of like the medium tone of the banana so we can kind of grab that uh, no stroke. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place this kind of above the actual picture itself. All right, so I have the base color of the banana. And now what I wanna do is add dimension. See how this banana has kind of like a highlight on the top, a medium tone on the side, and a darker shadow on the bottom. So I kinda of wanna make that same look to this illustration. So the gradient mesh tool is over here in your, in your uh, toolbox. Uh, U is your um, shortcut key to it. And what's neat about this is you can put as many or as, as little points to this. Uh, as you want. So you can really make it very customized um, and get real detailed with it, or you can keep it as simple as possible. And that depends on how many times you actually click on your item here. So let's go ahead and click on the line to make this banana more dimensional here. So I'm just gonna click around here. Whoops. I have to zoom in because this is a little tricky. On the line, I did something weird here. I'm going to backtrack. Here we go. And we're going to make a no fill on this. You know why I have this selected here? Let me go back. This should be that fill there we go all right it's already filling it in so we're just gonna go with it all right and you can adjust these um, points as well we're gonna go around on the top and then we're gonna do the sides here I 
sorry guys, I'm clicking on the wrong things here. Here we go. And we'll do a bottom one here. And we're gonna, let me go back. I'm gonna try to make it like the top, as close as I can on the top. There we go. And then on the bottom. There we go. Okay, so you can see it's kind of like a wireframe to what we're going to add highlight and uh, your midtones and your shadows. So it creates these vector points here. Um, and it kind of already applied the, the white to it. I'm not quite sure why. Let's go and grab just the solid color. There we go. I think I, I kind of accidentally grabbed uh, a white color. So it should look like this. Now, if you want only the top part to be affected, take your um, direct selection tool and just select that top section of vector points. So hold down the shift key and go ahead and select just that top section. So let's go ahead and do that. I can either do, I'm trying to think of where I want to set my highlights here. So I'm just holding that shift key down, selecting all of the vector points that I want to change a color to maybe a lighter color in this instance. Okay, once those are selected, I'll take my eyedropper tool and I'll just kind of sample the color that I want it to be. And you can keep sampling until you get the color that you want. Um, so you can go a little lighter, brighter, depending on what you select. So it's changing that. It's very, very, very um, slight, but you can kind of see that, that change of color there. You can keep going, hold the shift key down, direct selection tool, hold the shift key if you wanna do multiple selections at one time. Take your eyedropper tool, sample out this section here. I'll go a little darker than the top part. So it's starting to, to create that dimension. Same thing down here, this is more of the shadows. And then I'm going to take my eyedropper tool and grab the shadows. Now you can adjust this if that's too dark. You know, obviously you can adjust the um, color tone there. But as you can see, it, it's, it's getting more three-dimensional now. There we go. I would say the only thing I would say for this is maybe just making the highlights a little brighter. So let me go back to the top, just to give it a little bit more dimension, the more contrasted, the, the better you'll be here. The eyedropper tool. And we're gonna double click on this and make it just a little lighter. All right. So you can kind of see how that's adjusting. You can actually go in here and adjust each point too. You know, kind of play around with the contour and the shape. So if you have a face, for instance, that you're going around a lot of the, the curvature of your face, that will definitely be helpful um, to make it look more realistic. So it's kind of, it's kind of cool to play around with. Um, you can really make some interesting Interesting looks here. Let me go and grab this darker area here. Oops, I don't want that. Uh, and then to make it even look more realistic, you can add in the dots, the bruising dots, and that you can definitely do with um, the gradient tool as well. So what you would do is maybe just take a little circle, sample, the color that you want that that to be. So let's grab maybe like the brown in here. Click OK. Grab your gradients panel up here. The gradient panel, and we didn't discuss this. Um, the default is pretty much what you see here. So white to black. If you wanted to pull a color in here, you can drag and drop it. And these are called stops. So you have your light stop and your dark stop. 
um, and you can adjust these, you can flip these around. So, you know, depending on the direction of the lighting that you want, you can flip those around. You can even pull these off and use different colors. You can drop in different colors like I did here. This is a linear blend. You can do radial blends um, and whatever color is on the left is going to be the color that's on the outside. I'm sorry, on the inside. So you can kind of play around with that too. I'm going to kind of sample this color to be, whoops, more of the yellow color. So I'm going to pull this and replace it with the yellow. So it blends a little bit better. And then you can kind of play around with the degree of your um, gradient, so the location of it. Once I get that ready, I can copy and paste this, make it bigger, larger, different shapes to make it look more realistic. Oops. I don't know what I just did here, but. That kind of gives you a little bit more of a uh, realistic look about it. So you can kind of put in your spots and your dots. Okay. Any questions about that? No, pretty easy. All right, so when you go into say this example here and you're gonna do your gradients, um, you can do your gradient mesh tool and just or and or just your gradients. All right. So play around with it. Go into your gradient panel, drag, click your um, solid color, and drag in that color into your gradient panel box. You can change the color fill, like I said. Um, you know, if you didn't want this white, you can definitely change it to whatever color. Um, the green color, the dark green color, let's pull this in here. I'm just dragging and dropping. Let's do that again. I'm gonna drag and drop this in there and then I'm going to, we could probably make a swatch too. I think making the swatches might be very uh, <laughs> helpful so that you're not kind of going back and forth. So let me go back here, let's make this swatch. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this in here and I'm going to copy this, copy, paste. Oops. Duplicate. I'm going to make this a little darker. And then I'm just going to grab the colors in here real quick. Just dragging and dropping from all the colors in here with the eye chopper tool. That one. Okay. So then all I need to do, this is the darker one it should be, is drag and drop in here and then pull in different colors if I need it. Drag and dropping over top of the stop. I can play around with um, the gradients in terms of, you know, how you want them positioned. You can have a radial gradients. You can have a linear one and change the direction. So here is the perspective. So, you know, if you want to keep everything pretty similar, say like 120, you know, you can you can do so. And there we go. I'll just kind of play around with the the um, contrast of your gradients. This is the same direction here. So you can just do a simple gradient or you can do a gradient mesh too, which I would like to see kind of you play around with maybe both of those. There we go. Same with the blues, drag and drop and just pull off the stops if you wanna kind of play around with the colors. 
Maybe this one, we do like a radial blend. So we don't have much dark in here, do we? All right. So for the mesh tool, you can definitely play around with that, maybe with the trees. I don't know, I would probably make these trees a little bigger just so we can see them. By all means, if you want to make them bigger, that's fine. And then putting the gradient mesh on this, you could go ahead and, you know, make your, your, oops, your lines here. Oops, let me go here. So, Maybe the inside's a little darker than the outside. Let's make this a color and then duplicate this. We need like a, another color like this. Do duplicate swatch and then maybe make this a little darker. There we go. Here we go. Same thing with this one. You can make this more intricate if you want. It's completely up to you. And how you want to do this. Uh, this, there we go. Probably just move this over a little bit because it's kind of hard to see right here. Let's do this tree. I probably would change the, um, <coughs> the highlight here, maybe darker at the bottom. If the light's coming from the top, whoops. <clears throat> Let's make it lighter up here. It's definitely fun to play with, you know, you play around with the um, shadows and the highlights. If you want even lighter bright light, you can definitely, or lighter color, duplicate this swatch and double click on it to make it a little brighter. Adds dimension to it. The top part here. Depending on where the sun's kind of coming in and then you just kind of follow that same direction. Okay, you can do the same thing here if you wanted to kind of do play around with the mesh there as well. Or you can just keep it as a simple gradient and just do the textured um, trees using that gradient mesh. Let's try it on the hillside here. And let's see, oops, not what I wanted. <clears throat> it's gonna fill it with this color. Oops. All right. I think I accidentally took both of those together, and I should have did one. This one and that one. Yeah, they're together. Let me go back. Let me step back here. I think my layers are getting all weird here. I just want to do this one and then this one is in front. There we 
There we go. All right, let's keep that simple. So maybe we'll do like a lighter green here. This should be green. There we go. Make sure the fill is green first or else it's going to apply the black to it. All right. And so I'm going to try, let's do this. So it's a little curve there. I guess the beauty behind this is you can always change, change it. You know, if you're not happy with, the color. You can also throw in uh, a color. You don't necessarily have to select the points and drag and drop like that. Drag and drop like that. But it's a little bit more precise when you actually select the point. So like say for instance, these two points, you want to go a little darker, a little easier to control there. We can, can see how that's kind of affecting everything else. You can kind of, you know, play around with that. It's giving a nice shadow to this. I would probably go a little darker on this, part, um, you know, kind of make it all work based on what you're seeing in the front, recessing in the back. All right, so, you know, kind of implement the mesh and the gradient tools for the second one. The portrait's the same idea as well. Um, let me bring up my portrait I was doing yesterday. So we can kind of take a look at that real quick and I can show you some things to try. All right. Let me reset my panels here. I have them all over the place. All right, let's start over here. Layers. So you should have your template layer here. This is good for um, <coughs> grabbing the um, color information. What you can do here is you can make a copy of this layer for this particular project if you're using your portrait layer. You can, you can uncheck templates. You can make it a full color to grab your color off of. I think it still kind of chooses that color anyway, even if you have it as a template layer, as long as you're selecting it on that layer, it's just easier to see the color there. The next thing that I would do, and also, this is what's nice about making a copy, is we can drag this over to the side of your artboard. So that when we're implementing the colors in the mesh, with the mesh tool, you can kind of grab it very easily and kind of go back and forth. All right, with that being said, the only bad thing about the, um, this is something to kind of keep in mind, um, and I didn't mention this yesterday, which I probably should have. Um, with how I created this portrait, some of my shapes weren't completely closed. So for example, you know, my face shape is only like a half of a line here. The only bad thing about that, it's not a closed shape. Um, you can you can add gradients to a line and a stroke, but you can't do a mesh without having a closed shape. Okay, so it might be a little tricky. You can easily remedy this by just creating a very basic shape without any type of stroke. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to do a new layer here. And I'm going to name this face. And the only 
thing you're going to have to do is just kind of retrace this. Now, I'm going to have a stroke on this so that I can see it, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be, um, and before I do this, let me lock my layers here because I know I'm going to have trouble. Let me lock this layer. And this should be okay. All right. It's going to start connecting my layers, my lines, and I don't want that happening. Now you can make a copy and paste that same line work and just kind of close the path up too. You don't have to necessarily make a new shape like I'm doing right now. But as long as it, you know, it has to be closed. It has to be a closed shape so that we can add a gradient mesh to it. So I failed to tell you guys that last time. I, I apologize. All right. So I'm going to put a no stroke on this. But if I were to want to add a, a mesh, I need to have a closed shape. And then I'm going to take, once I select, um, do you have that closed shape for my face? I'm going to go to my eyedropper tool. And I would really recommend doing bigger sections first. Take the eyedropper tool and, and kind of sample out kind of like a medium tone. I would say probably somewhere around here is probably a good, yeah, maybe even lighter around here. Looks kind of funny. We're going to pull this down so that we can see it below all of our layers there. Now you can start adding the mesh to it. The contours of the face will really kind of matter in this regard, so you might want to kind of pay attention to that. Um, and we can always adjust this, okay? So it's not like you, know, you only can do this one time. It's, you can adjust this. Okay, let's put it in here. And these would be where maybe you have changes of within the curvature of your face. All right. <laughs> so you can go in here and adjust this, you know, if you want this to kind of align more with your nose, <coughs> excuse me, and your cheek structures, you can, uh, you know, play around with these anchor points so that it better kind of contours your face. And that's using the direct selection tool. So I'm just kind of making sure I have some, and I, I might change this depending on how I'm gonna add all my stuff going on here. That's my cheeks. Yeah, see this point is weird. I'm gonna have to play around with that. Uh, but for the most part, I think I got it. I got it. All right, then I'm gonna take the eyedropper tool again, and I'm gonna, um, well, actually, before I do that, sample out an area. So I want it to be kind of darker where the darker areas are. Obviously, let me pull this over a little bit. So I'm going to select the nose area, for instance, because I know this is kind of a little darker here. Maybe down here and maybe up here a little bit. And we'll see how that pulls. Take the eyedropper tool and go ahead and grab the darker areas. You don't want it to be too dark. But that's kind of where you start there. And just kind of play around with it. All right, so we know this is kind of where the light's hitting my face on the left side and on the right side. So we want to keep that lighter. So I'm going to shift, select this area over here. And oh, this is a little darker over here. And I'm going to pull in a lighter tone. If it's not quite as light as you want it, you can double click on the fill and kind of uh, change it up there. The, the lighter and the darker, nicer blends is where you're going to get more contrast. It's going to look a little bit more interesting and more contoured. You know, the better contrast that you have going on.
Okay, and then the more contour lines that you do have, the more details, like for instance, right here, you know, you, you have the curvature of where the dimples are in the face. You can have more lines in there to, to be a little darker. So it's not so widespread, it's a little smaller. Um, so I maybe add an extra line in there. Let's see if I can actually do that. There we go. And just kind of sample out a little darker of the line. A little lighter. <laughs> Same thing here, you know, if I want my nose to have a little bit of a lighter tone in there, you know, maybe I'll add an extra line in there and an extra line in here. And then I have a little bit more control when I'm doing the highlights here. There we go. Um, might have to be a little blended up here. I don't know, just kind of see, see what works. But you can kind of see the face is getting more contoured. Maybe over here is a little lighter. Okay, here's a little darker. This could take a little, a little bit more of a, you know, more time than what you're used to, but I think it, it's definitely fun. It's definitely fun to play around with and see what you can come up with. You just need closed shapes. That's kind of the, uh, the tip there. Now, uh, I would probably change your outline so they're not black. So maybe they're more skin tone. Oops, not that. <clears throat> Let's see here. Let's grab a color. Swatches. And swatches so that we can change this line to that color. I'll probably have to shift that. You might need, not even need that line anymore. You could probably delete that line <clears throat> and just go with that shape. It's completely up to you. It look a little bit more realistic that way. The only bad thing is, you know, I didn't close my shapes here. Like for example, this line here, I would have to close it. Here's, here's how I would do it if you wanted to do it in this regards. I, I kind of recreated it before, um, but if you wanted to keep your line and not have to recreate this, just go ahead and continue this line by clicking right on it with your pen tool and then end it so that you have more of a solid shape there. And then again, just go ahead over to grab the color that you want to start with. Do that color. And then add your mesh to that. This could be very simple. Oh, the hair. I keep it very simple here. All right. A little darker around here. Well, maybe I will add some more dimension in here just to. Pretty interesting though. I mean, you can kind of do some really interesting stuff with this. Let's 
Now, the only thing too here is I don't have this dark part of my face kind of in here. I'd have to create the shape and maybe just copying and pasting this shape in there will be all I need to do on the back. Oops, it's getting that same look, but maybe making this a little darker. Maybe that full dark, but <clears throat> the darker brown color. There we go. And we just have to play around with our lines. I probably should have done this before, but I <laughs> didn't. So it'd be easier if you had your illustration, obviously, ready to go beforehand. I'm kind of changing this up because I didn't have it originally done the way that I wanted it to. So I'm kind of adjusting this now. Oops. I'm zooming in. We'll be good. Just to be as tight as I want it to. And then I can kind of adjust this too. All right. Let me grab this guy here. A little bit better. This is my ear, so I have to figure that out. <clears throat> you can add in lines too if you want, you know, just vertical lines to kind of add a little bit more of a dimension on the hair. Completely up to you. It's a little bit more flat looking, but that's fine. You can keep it simple too. The only, the biggest thing is, you know, having closed shapes to add the gradient mesh to, because I didn't advise you guys to do that initially for the portrait. So you might be like, ah, I'm gonna do all this. Now I wouldn't have, you know, you don't have to worry about these details here, you know, for the face in terms of the lines, simple lines for the face. Just change them to a darker color that would be more in line with the skin tones, maybe even darker than that. Keep it simple, you don't have to put a gradient on them or anything. Maybe just a little darker. <laughs> Same thing with the lips, you know. Um, you can definitely put a gradient on there. I have to uh, close my sheet. I could probably do that gradient. You could just do a gradient if you want. You don't have to do a mesh, as long as it's a closed shape. Just do that. And let's say you just want to put a gradient on that. Let's bring up the gradient tool. Let's try and this. Drag and drop. And again, you can make your stops. You know. Highlights. There we go. So I'm just going to add these two so that I can easily change this now. And make it yours. Real. If you want to get more contoured, of course, you can do mesh. Oops. Not black lips. Let's give it a just a regular fill here. Mm -hmm. 
So I believe, yeah, the middle part's obviously the, the darker part. And we're gonna get rid of this because we don't need this anymore. Make this a little darker. So you can see you can kind of get some dark part here. Get this to be contoured a little bit more. You can obviously make this even darker in, in here. And I would probably change this to be a little bit more accurate <laughs> directional wise. It's a little kind of off perspective there, but just kind of messing around with the vector points. So you would go all the way around with this. You would do the other side of the hair and the neckline. And I don't have too much of a shirt going on here, so that's good. So it's just basically getting the shape of my neck. Here would be a little bit more dark. So I'm gonna make a dark shape, maybe black in here so you wouldn't see all of that. The eyes you can do differently too. You know, obviously you could put a radial blend on that. I'll show you how to do that. Let's see, everything's locked here. There we go. Take the um, eyedropper tool. She said, looks like I have a blue eye there. It's kind of interesting. Pull that into my swatches. I'm going to make a duplicate of that. I'm going to make this a little lighter. Oops. Let's pull this up here so all my swatches are together. All right. And then you can bring up the gradient blend here. light and dark, and then do a radial with maybe the, the light on the inside there. Now, obviously I would do, you know, recreate my eyeball. So I have a white outline on the basic shape here which I can't get to for some reason. Here we go. And then the white, and then the outline. You can maybe make a little, that's kind of black, probably just keep it that way. Same thing with this, we can add the same radial blend to that. A little easy once you create it, adding that to it. Let's go sample this. So I'm just going to sample that color, my eyebrows. What we got here. All right. So just sampling from your original and then adding to your portrait. If I actually saved it, I'm just gonna make it, whoops, I'm just gonna make it like a brown here. All right. Same thing with this, maybe make it less Contrasting so go to the brown skin tone. Go 
fix the ear, can I pull it in the back? It's getting there though. Just like brown. Does anybody have any questions? So far. So you can shape it, mold it. The hair I definitely can improve upon. I just let's see if I can actually add some shadow work in there. Just to show you kind of how you can drag and drop in there to make it look more realistic there. <coughs> So it's, you know, you can really grab some of the details in here if you really wanted to like contour the face a little bit more. The darker you are in certain areas, you know, the more realistic it can look depending on how you have it. You know, it can also look really weird too. So you want to make sure it's blending well um, and just kind of go back and forth from your picture to your illustration a lot so that you're, you're getting all that information that you can um, and making it look as realistic as you can. I mean, obviously I have some stylistic things like the eyebrows don't look very realistic stylistically, but maybe the color matches, you know, with that more so. When you're done, you're gonna save, save this. Um, Make sure if you're doing the portrait, kind of how I show the long shadows, what you would do with that. Let me show you that example again if I have it up here. It wouldn't really necessarily be long shadows. It would just be like a highlight, low light so that you're adding in there, like a flat highlight, low light. So you can see the, the low lights and then the highlights on the skin. And then the gradient mesh would look like this. So you're gonna do, you're not gonna do the two different ones. You're gonna choose one to go with either your portrait or your landscape and you're gonna do two different styles to it. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Does anybody have, I'm gonna wrap this up. Does anybody have anything they wanna share or any questions? You're gonna save this as, let me see here with the assessment. I think it's a, we're gonna save the native file, but you're gonna submit the PDF, multiple page PDF. All right. This time. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be around. Uh, you know, shoot me an email or whatever. I'm going to wrap it up today. You guys can get started on your projects, and uh, I'll see you guys on the discussion boards. Thank you for meeting up so early with me this morning. You guys enjoy your day.
Oh, I wonder what she's going to say.
Hey, Nikki, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, I actually addressed this in the beginning of the lecture. Um, the video is not working. I did get a couple emails from, from students, and I, I'll send out an email, but um, just try to answer the question. If you get it wrong, you'll get credit. Are you sure? Yes. As long as you attempt it, you're good. But it's a pretty simple question, so try to make you know, the best guess that you can. Okay. And then, you know, I will definitely let somebody know to fix the link for future use. And use. But uh, thank you for letting me know. You're welcome. Yeah, I didn't know if anyone else had um, tried it yet or not. So yeah, I had a couple emails. So I, yeah, I addressed that earlier. I, I will send out a, an announcement and everything. So okay. All right. Yeah, no, thank you. I just like I said, I just didn't know if anyone else had tried it. So yep, you're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. Exactly. Yeah. And if anything like that happens, let me know because sometimes there's slip by me because there are you know, so many questions during like the mod. So sometimes it just happens even, you know, within a couple of days, you know, the videos sometimes aren't there if it is a link. So yeah, I usually won't know until like that morning when I take it. So right, exactly. Yeah, just attempt it. If you don't get it right, I uh, will adjust your grade accordingly. So Okay, yeah, it's only five points, but boy, they help. Yes, they all add up for sure. <laughs> all right, thanks, Nikki. Thank you. All right, have a good day. You too. Okay, bye. Bye.